1978 brought a new look to the Western Athletic Conference, but WAC football was as exciting and wide open as ever. The WAC again lived by the forward pass, gaining more yards than any other conference playing a major schedule. And the fans loved it, as four schools set attendance records and six showed increases at the turnstiles. San Diego State joined the fold in 1978, and Hawaii will be welcomed in 1979, making the WAC a most desirable conference to travel in. Three WAC athletes won All-America First Team honors, while 12 seniors and three coaches participated in postseason All-Star games. The year's highlight, the christening of the Holiday Bowl game in San Diego. This is Keith Jackson, and these are highlights of another exciting wet football season. Western Athletic Conference Football 1978 is brought to you by Frontier Airlines. You can fly Frontier to over 90 cities with 300 jet departures every business day in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. The WAC race generated a high level of interest in 1978, even with the earliest clinching of the title in seven years, as Brigham Young retained its hold on the WAC football championship. BYU has won or shared in the last three league titles, and this year, Coach Lavelle Edwards found everybody waiting to take their best shots at his Cougars. Sophomore quarterback Jim McMahon cured BYU of an early season case of the Blahs with his scrambling and passing abilities and shared the Outstanding Offensive Player Award of the WAC in 1978. McMahon won four of five starts and relieved in another victory for the Cougars. Junior Mark Wilson passed for 1,500 yards and was a winner in five starts, proving the dual quarterback system can work. Utah compiled the second best turnaround record nationally with an eight and three mark compared to three and eight in 1977. Coach Wayne Howard in his second year explains Utah's best showing in nine years this way. We had a young team and uh, we made mistakes, but we had, uh, we had a great attitude. We won some close games because I think we really wanted to play badly. Five foot seven, Randy Gomez, the Ute spark plug, and Wayne Howard was very high on his tiny field general. He won a lot of games for us, and I think the thing that stood out about him the most was that he came through in the clutch and, and really played well when the pressure was on. Improvement on defense, a main reason for the Utah turnaround. The kicking game was strong with punter Rick Partridge. During the season, he boomed a whack record 91-yarder and finished ranked third in the nation. A young Wyoming team faced a rugged schedule in 1978 and showed plenty of promise for the future. The Spunky Cowboys overcame mid-season injuries to play some of their best football in the late season. Coach Bill Lewis put together a ferocious defense headed by All-America linebacker Ken Fantetti. The two-time All-WAC performer put his quickness to work. Wyoming's fleet Myron Hardeman was leading the WAC in rushing through six games and needed just 12 yards to become Wyoming's career record holder when a knee injury is sent into the sidelines for the rest of the season. Still, the senior thrilled Cowboy fans with his long distance running. A slow start hurt Colorado State during 1978, but a fast finish with five wins in the last eight games brought a smile to Coach Sark Arslanian's face, as did the play of All-America tackle Mike Bell. Bell was double and triple teamed all year, but his quickness coming off the ball made for a great deal of success. Another Bell, wide receiver Mark R, continued to be the Rams' big playman. New Mexico turned loose a new quarterback, and the result was the best season in eight years. Coach Bill Mott's fifth year at New Mexico became a pleasure when sophomore Brad Wright took over the signal calling duties. He led the Vera attack for over 400 yards, gained per game, tops in the whack. Ricky Martin turned many a right pass into a long gain, averaging 30 yards per catch. Ground power came from the WAC's all-time rushing leader, Mike Williams, the league's other offensive player of the year. 
and freshman Mike Carter made a big splash, leading all conference rookies in yardage gain. Injuries and a lack of depth hindered UTEP's building program, but the interest in Texas El Paso football continued to grow as Coach Bill Michael put together an exciting brand of football led by senior quarterback Oscar Ramirez. UTEP liked to keep the defenses honest. The halfback pass was one successful method. new member for 1978, San Diego State, brought a wealthy tradition of exciting, wide-open football into the league. Coach Claude Gilbert saw his Aztecs limp through the season with many key injuries. But one man who stayed healthy was Mark Halda, the Wax leading passer. The strong-arm sophomore threw the long ball so very well. The WAC traditionally has strong and quick running backs, and 1978 fits the previous mold. The conference ringleader, New Mexico fullback Mike Williams, who became the WAC's career rushing leader with a third consecutive 1,000-yard season. He finished with over 3,800 career yards, and UNM already has retired his number 40 jersey. Williams' running mate was young Mike Carter, who may soon challenge his teammates' records. Carter did not become a starter until midway in 1978, but still finished with nearly 600 yards rushing. Colorado State's Larry Jones already ranks fourth in Ram career rushing, and he has two years to go. He's at 1,700 yards in climbing. Jones' Ram teammate Alvin Lewis gained over 800 yards, giving Colorado State a solid one-two punch for the future. Freshman Del Rogers of Utah led the whack in rushing early in 78 until a knee injury sidelined him for the year. As he did in 1977, Tony Lindsay came to Utah's rescue. The sophomore walk-on led the Utes in rushing with over 800 yards. The quickest man in the WAC, Wyoming's Myron Hardiman. He, like Rogers, heading the charts at the time of a knee injury. Hardiman leaves Wyoming after setting five records in two seasons. Senior Latreya Jones concluded his career by becoming Wyoming's all-time rushing leader with over 2,000 yards. Cowboy senior Bob Davis did most of the blocking for Hardeman and Jones, but was a fine runner in his own right. Bill Ring was a small but effective fullback for Brigham Young. He scored 11 times and rushed for over 500 yards. Tops for the Pass Happy Cougars. Joining Ring were sophomore Scott Phillips, number 20. And senior Casey Wingert, number four. The steadiest performer for San Diego State, fullback Phil Dubois, the Aztec leader with over 700 yards. Injuries slowed Aztec newcomer Marcus Jennings, but when he was healthy, he showed what to expect in 79. left 93 on the audible. <laughs> the WAC prides itself in always possessing quarterbacks and receivers capable of playing wide open football and 1978 was a strong season for this kind of game. Wyoming senior Mark Cousins ran the Veer offense effectively and also showed steady improvement as a passer. Two of his favorite targets, tight ends John Waite And 
Vic Bajinski. UTEP enjoyed versatility in the form of Oscar Ramirez, another capable runner. He was an effective passer, hitting for over 2,600 yards in his career. Colorado State employed the two-quarterback system with right-hander Keith Lee and southpaw Steve Fairchild at the controls. Lee had most of the starting assignments and proved to be a solid runner as well as passer. He totaled over 1,000 yards in 1978. Fairchild was more of a drop-back passer. The junior led the nation in passing early in the season. Mark R. Bell, called Tinker by his teammates, finished as the second leading Ram receiver ever. 87 career catches and 1,700 yards. Tight end Mark Ebell came into his own as a receiver in his senior year. Always known as a solid blocker, the Ram veteran finished with 26 catches. Brigham Young will miss seniors Mike Conister and Todd Thompson. Conister was a two-time all-WAC pick and finished as the number nine receiver in league history with 117 catches. Thompson, a three-year starter, sure-handed tight end who grabbed more TD passes in 1978 than any other Cougar receiver. Don Warren made an immediate impression in the WAC for San Diego State. This senior named All-WAC led the Aztecs in receiving. Warren also appeared in postseason All-Star play. WAC passing leader Mark Halda ranked third nationally thanks to Steve Stabler number three. And the ever-present Phil Dubois. Jim Tian led a trio of Utah receivers, joining him, Frank Henry, and tight end Steve Folsom. Tian, a pleasant surprise as a sophomore. Henry led the team in receiving with 45 catches in his senior year. Steve Folsom took over at tight end, and once he arrived, the sophomore was not to be dislodged. Brad Wright came off the bench early in the year for New Mexico to finish as the WAC's total offense leader. He ran the veer to perfection. He was an accurate passer, throwing to receivers like number 19, Dave Wyrick. And big playman, Keith Ellis, number 14, who knew what to do with that football after he caught it. Ellis's work typifies the wide open brand of whack football. The entire whack enjoyed an abundance of solid defensive play in 1978. Here's a sampling of line and linebacker play, starting with Glenn Red of BYU. Watch all whack defensive ends, Matt Mendenhall, number 83. And Ross Varner, number 91, both of BYU. Let's look at UTEP's Elroy Stoglin, number 87. CSU's Kent Campbell, number 23. And Dennis Freeman, number 74. New Mexico in Charles Baker, number 53. All-WAC Lobo tackle Robert Rumball, also an academic All-America and NCAA post-grad scholar. Utah's Mike Kinsella, number 70. Ute Guy Morrell, number 85. And WAC Rookie of the Year, Jeff Lyle, number 73. From San Diego State, Bob Levine. Ron Morehouse, number 51. And Ricky Richardson, number 90. Leading Wyoming was Mike Webb. Also Don Jesse, number 72. And All-America linebacker Ken Pantetti, who averaged 13 tackles a game. Another leader was CSU tackle Mike Bell, who was named to three All-America teams and twice won all WAC honors. Eddie Forkaway of UTEP, an all-whack and all-academic pick, heads the list of interception artists for 1978.
minor teammate Rusty Merriweather, a freshman, also knew what to do when that ball was in the air. Linebacker Rod Wood was an ever-present menace to opposing teams. He was an all-whack pick while at BYU. Wyoming defenders were led by Jerry Urey, number 22. And all-whack defender Mike Dennis. The Cowboys secondary grabbed more interceptions than any other team in the WAC with 23. Utah's Jeff Griffin returned three of his five interceptions for touchdowns to tie a single season NCAA and WAC record. No other defensive back nationally in 1978 could match that achievement. Linebacker Eric Woody led Colorado State's defense against the pass. Newcomers Charles Williams, number 18. Denzel McDonald, number 15, also made their marks. New Mexico's Doug Smith, number 17, led the conference in interceptions. Aztec defender Steve Jordy, also very active. The premier defensive back in the WAC was San Diego State's Henry Williams, an All-America pick who played in three All-Star games. His abilities were such that most quarterbacks just simply didn't throw in his own. Coach Dick Tomey and his Hawaii Rainbow Warriors joined the WAC in July 1979. Tomey has turned around the Hawaii program in two years and will miss senior quarterback Jeff Duba, who led the Rainbow Warriors to a winning season in 1978. A fine core of receivers return, led by Dwayne Jett, number 21. Wayne Black, number 87. And freshman David Tolaumu, number 40. Linebacker Mike Arvanitas is gone, but the defense is in the capable hands of Blaine Gason in the secondary. Hawaii also has a very quick and strong defensive line returning. Coach Tony Knapp and his Nevada Las Vegas Rebels are on the WAC horizon. The Rebels are waiting final action by the WAC's President Council on their application, and meanwhile, Knapp is building a winner around explosive Leon Walker, who rushed for over 900 yards in his junior year. Returning for two more seasons, quarterback Doug Robertson, who showed Rebel fans steady improvement once he took over as the starter. Tight end Dean Barnett is the Rebels' leading returning receiver for 1979. On defense, in Ron Cruz, number 98, returns, as does Sao Veafega, number 64. Also back is in Gary Eversole, number 81. The new kid on the block, the Holiday Bowl, was an instant success. The game was sold out two months in advance of its debut and was one of only five bowls to do so. The attractions of San Diego, the pageantry involved, and the dignitaries attending made quite a splash for an infant just getting started. Surprising Navy was the foe of WAC representative Brigham Young. The midshipmen put together the best service academy record in many years with wins over rivals Army and Air Force, plus beating Pittsburgh and Duke, highlighting their eight and three season. BYU took charge in the second quarter with the McMahon to Cronister combination connecting twice for 33 yards and a 10 yard touchdown. The inside guy goes like that, launch back over there. All he had to do was follow me. Third quarter, McMahon put BYU further in front, 
with a short yardage sweep. But the Cougar offense could mount no more scoring threats. The defensive player of the game, Tom Enlow, number 55, kept the midshipmen at bay. But the persistent Navy midshipmen overhauled BYU with a dramatic finish to emerge as the winner of the Holiday Bowl. Looking ahead toward 1979, it appears the WAC will be a young man's league. Here's a look at next year's stars, beginning with UTEP tight end Frank Jarzombek, who has two seasons left. Minor Bubba Garcia already ranks fourth on UTEP's all-time receiving list. A healthy Marcus Jennings of San Diego State will go a long way toward a balanced Aztec attack. Mark Halda returns to defend his whack passing crown, but will have to break in a new core of receivers. Alvin Lewis will provide big play spark for Colorado State, as he did on this punt return. CSU's Larry Jones is the leading returning rusher in the WAC for 1979. The Rams have both quarterbacks back, Keith Lee and Steve Fairchild. The versatile Dwayne Jett gives Hawaii some speed for their WAC debut. Wax total offense leader Brad Wright returns along with tight end Chris Cohn. Wright's versatility will be a key to Lobo's success. And New Mexico receiver William Owens has great potential. Lobo Mike Carter is one of the quickest backs ever to hit the wax. Aerial game is in the good hands of Danny Pittman. And Utah's Dell Popcorn Rogers will be exciting to watch for three more years. Tony Lindsay provides the Utes with valuable experience. And receiver Jim Tian shows signs of greatness. Defensive back Jeff Griffith is one of Utah's finest ever. Brigham Young's Scott Phillips provides experience at running back. And the Cougars once again will use the co-quarterback system as both Mark Wilson and Jim McMahon return to defend BYU's 1978 WAC title. Brigham Young coach Lavelle Edwards predicts... I think with future teams coming into the league, that we're going to have the same high caliber of football, we're going to have the high caliber of uh, competition, and I can see nothing but uh, a great future and, a, and uh, great football games uh, in future years. Can BYU repeat once again? How strong is newcomer Hawaii? Whatever the answers, 1979 WAC rosters have the personnel to provide another big play year. Western Athletic Conference Football 1978 was brought to you by Frontier Airlines, the airline that lets you stretch out with first-class comfort at coach prices.